Hi guys, I wanted to give you a little bit of help on the Earthquake Lab, since that's going to be the first lab that you have to complete. Your lab looks something like this, and I want you to notice in these parentheses it says things like Q8.1, Q8.3. Well, that corresponds to questions that are in your lab manual. And you don't have to answer every question, so pay careful attention to which ones I ask you to answer. Now this lab manual is a little bit different from other ones you might have worked it with. A lot of lab manuals have a big long chapter that you're supposed to read and then at the end of the chapter they have questions for you. This one has the questions built into the chapter. Like for instance, question 8.1 is right here. Question 8.3 is right here. Well, in general, the answer to the questions will be found in the text right above that question, or sometimes you might find the answer in one of the illustrations that's nearby. But basically, the answer to this should be in the paragraph preceding it. So that's clue number one to finishing uh, some of these uh, problems. Now, a few other things. Right down here I have questions 8.10a, uh, b, and c. And that is calculating the uh, Richter magnitude of an earthquake. And you will do that using this nomograph. And it's very similar to what I showed you in the lecture, where, for example, um, A says you have an eight seconds between the P wave and the S waves. That's what you read on this part of the graph, and eight would be right there. You have 20 millimeters of uh, amplitude, which is right there. So you will take a straight edge, line 8 up with 20, and wherever it crosses, that's what your Richter magnitude is. Uh, so just make sure that uh, you use this graph for these three questions. Oh, and I do need to point out something on this one. Your lab book has a typo, and there are two question 8.8s. I want you to answer the one on page 134, so make sure you pay attention to that and don't answer the wrong question 8.8. Okay, another part of this lab is these questions here. This is where you are going to actually figure out the epicenter of an earthquake given real data. You're going to be given real seismograms. And those are shown right here. We have the seismogram at station LTN, the one at GOIL, and the one at POW. And on your lab, you have this uh, chart to fill in. So let's look first at LTN, right? There we have LTN on the chart. So the first thing you want to measure is the P wave arrival time. And remember on these, the P wave is the first wave to arrive, the S wave is the second, and time is going in this direction. Up here on this graph, we have time shown in hours, minutes, and seconds. So right here is where the P wave first arrives. And so I'm just going to put my ruler there and say, all right, the P wave first arrives right here, right at that little thing. So if this is 3 hours, 46 minutes, 40 seconds, um, that's 3 hours, 47 minutes, 0 seconds. So that's 40 seconds, 50, no, 40, 45, 50, 55, there's the next minute. And if our P wave arrives right there, that means it's 3 hours, 46 seconds, I just said that wrong, sorry, 3 hours, 46 minutes, 
45 seconds, right? Because there's this is 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. And so that is what you would write down here. You would write 3 hours, 46 minutes, 45 seconds. Then the next thing you do is figure out when the S wave arrived. So again, I'm just going to set my ruler right here. Looks like the S wave arrives right there. Well, guess what? That's 3 hours, 46 uh, minutes, 50 seconds, right? Each one of these little marks is a second. That's 5, 10, so that's 3, 46, 50. So I would write that right here. Now the difference between the P and the S waves, if one arrived at 45 seconds and one arrived at 50 seconds, the time difference would be 5 seconds, which is what you write in here. And now that you have the difference in the P and the S wave arrival times, we can calculate the distance in kilometers. And this distance in kilometers, we can get off this chart right here. So on the x-axis, we have the difference in arrival times of the P and the S waves. And right there is 5 seconds, right? We said it was 5 seconds. So there's 5 seconds. I go straight down from 5 seconds to this dashed line, and then I come straight across, and that gives me the distance from the earthquake in kilometers. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, no, this is 10, 20, 30, 40. Each one of these marks is 10. So if I came down here and straight across, it looks like I'm sitting right at 40 kilometers. So that's what you're going to do with those problems. We just figured out the one for LTN, and we know that's 40 kilometers away from the epicenter of the earthquake. You now need to fill in the ones for the other two seismograms. All right, additional problems that you will have with this include um, then locating the epicenter of that earthquake. You have this, and Remember, we just calculated LTNs, um, uh, the distance to the earthquake from that. Well, here's a scale, and we figured out it was 40 kilometers away. Now, if you happen to have a compass, you'll just set the compass to do 40 kilometers and draw a circle. I know some of you don't have compasses at home, so you can just take a piece of scrap paper you can say, all right, there's zero, there's 40 kilometers, there's LTN, and you can estimate what a circle would look like by putting a few marks along here. It's kind of like uh, having a homemade compass. And from that, you'll be able to estimate where your circle would be. I don't expect you to be perfect on these, but eventually when you figure out the distances for these other two uh, seismometers, you'll figure out approximately where the epicenter of the earthquake is. And you don't have to give me the latitude and longitude or anything like that. Just tell me approximately where it would be located. Just come up with that in words. All right. Now, last of the, um, well, second to last of the somewhat challenging questions that we have is here question number 18, where it says contour the Bay of Bengal. All right, I understand many of you have not had physical geology, so you don't know how to contour things. That's why we're going to do this problem together right now. When we contour things, what we're doing is we're either showing the elevation above sea level or the depth below sea level. In this case, we're going to draw in uh, the depth below sea level in um, thousands of meters. 
So for example, uh, let's see, let's draw in a thousand meters. I draw that in right about here. This is an island, so there's a thousand meters right there. Now, why did I draw the line there? If this is a thousand meters below sea level. Everything on one side of the line should be less than a thousand meters, and everything on the other side of the line should be more than a thousand meters. See that? Now, let's draw in two thousand meters below sea level. Something like that, right? Again, everything on one side of the line is greater than 2,000. Everything on the other side is less. Then let's draw in 3,000 meters. And that should be enough to solve the problem. So, hey, you get at least one point for free by having that, right? We did it together. And one thing I want you to pay careful attention to, the reason you did this in number 18 is number 19 is going to ask you why, when there was a tsunami, only two people died in Bangladesh, but 38,000 died in Sri Lanka. And so pay attention to the water depth as we leave Bangladesh versus the water depth as we go leave Sri Lanka, right? It gets from shallow to deep very rapidly here, but there's a lot of shallow water here. Pay careful attention to that as you answer number 19. Now, number 20 is going to ask you how much time it took for a tsunami to get from where it began here at the epicenter to the coast of uh, Sri Lanka. And you can solve this by using the equation distance equals rate times time. The, your lab manual will give you the rate you measure the distance using that scale, right? Just measure the distance from the epicenter to Sri Lanka, and that just leaves you with time um, to calculate how long it took for that tsunami to get there. Now, of course, uh, as with all things, if you have questions about this lab, please just let me know and I'll be sure to help you with it.